Okay. Okay. If you want to, um, you've done this more than I have. So um, if you want to just introduce yourself and, and um, you know, I'm still getting to know who you are as much as well with the New York Gestalt Institute, um, we can start there. Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Dan Bloom. Um, I'm the, the current president of the New York Institute of Gestalt Therapy. I'm a Gestalt psychotherapist uh, based in New York City. Uh, I've been a Gestalt therapist for a long time. Uh, and uh, uh, I currently do psychotherapy training, clinical supervision, webinars. I write, uh, I lecture, I uh, present at, at uh, conferences, I edit. Um, I think it covers about everything that I do. And now that I'm president of the New York Institute for Gestalt Therapy, this is my third time I'm president and just became president as of uh, two weeks ago. Wonderful. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you. You know, we are the institute that was founded by Fritz and Laura Pearls in 1952. So we mm -hmm. carry with us the, uh, uh, the tradition of the institute. And Laura was the president of the institute for life until she died. Uh, she, uh, uh, yeah, she was the president for life. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I find that she's very influential. Like as I've been reading her book, um, right here. Yeah, you can that see is it. Yes, there. Um, I've just been enthralled in it, and I find that there's parts of it that um, I wanted to bring up to you as well because you personally have, you know, you trained under Laura. Yeah, I trained with her in the uh, late, in the early 80s, and then again in the late 80s. I was in her last practicum that she led until the end, until her, until she died, until she was unable to, to practice and she stopped practicing. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I trained with, with Laura, uh, Patrick Kelly, uh, Isidore Fromm, and, and Richard Kitzler. All three were fellows of the New York Institute for Gestalt Therapy. They were my principal trainers. Richard Kitzler was my mentor. Oh, awesome. So I do have some questions that I kind of put together uh, for today. If you're okay, uh, I ask you some of them. Oh, by all means. By all okay. means. Awesome. Um, where were you and what was it like to first meet Laura Pearls? Actually, as you say, uh, I first met Laura Pearls, probably not thinking about it in the mid to late 1970s, when she she did a workshop somewhere in in, uh, in rural New York State, just just a just not barely call it rural, just just north of New York City. She when she was doing workshops, and uh, she was more or less in a, a, a Fritz Perls model where people would do, she would do a workshop, people would gather around. She would do a little presentation on theory, I believe, if I remember correctly, and uh, uh, she would work with people who would volunteer to work with her, and she would work with somebody, and then do then just explain the theory and work with people and do a little bit of the work of the group. She was very impressive and uh, very frightening because she was Laura Pearls. Mm -hmm. She was very uh, warm. And very uh, gentle and very German, uh, and very sweetly so, um, and in intimidating, but not not rough. Softly intimidating, but she was intimidating because she was articulate, and she was intimidating in, in her gentleness, and that was that was characteristic of her. Intimidating because she was very present, and uh, uh, she would come towards you in a in a way that wasn't rough, but very. Um, um, Specific, like gentle, if you look but at some also of the very ways, specific. Was it more of a gentle yeah, approach she, than Fritz did? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but at the same time, confronted. Yeah, uh, you, you would with a smile and warmth. You couldn't get away from her. Mm. Mm -hmm. That would be you could put a put a little bit of a, of a, of a, a pin in that and get back to it. That, that a lot of the uh, the reputation that Fritz had fairly or unfairly based upon some of those unfortunate films was that he was aggressive now that's mm -hmm. not true now he was aggressive in a, in a hostile way no that's not true because in individual therapy you'll hear especially from people like bob resnick he was gentle and he was a sweet man mm -hmm. but when he did a workshop 
it's less so because these are demonstrations of uh, these are demonstrations and a demonstration is not doing psychotherapy true you demonstrate you demonstrate you therapy you do therapy nevertheless you have them set up again set off against each other you have the more aggressive patriarchal approach and had more outrageous approaches of fritz as a persona in the late 70s and the the guru of the human potential movement then you have laura who's sort of eclipsed by that large gruff bearded prophet persona and you have laura on the east coast being a lot softer a lot softer voiced she was a dancer she's a slighter persona she played the piano so that if you could think about the difference between somebody who would be playing the, the large character and then somebody who's playing the Beckstein piano, mm -hmm. Beckstein, yeah, you have a, a whole different kind of sense. Very different style, but, then, but similar approaches in right. to the theory, but different style to get there. A little different approach to the theory. Mm -hmm. Notice when I'm moving, this would be Laura. She would be floating. I don't think, I never met Fritz, but I don't think you could think of Fritz as floating. Yeah. I mean, I've watched a lot of his videos and the training that I had with Dr. Berger at the LA um, Gestalt Institute that trained under Fritz. And uh -huh. um, I mean, they work together, they train together, he inherited his videos and stuff like that. So that's the experience that I had. Um, and so like it, it is more direct and a lot of some some other people would feel like it's more abrasive and that's really what I feel um is a hindrance in some ways of how people believe that gestalt is and only is and there's different styles and different approaches like you're saying that they're um you you said there was a difference a little bit with the approach of theory possibly yes yes oh so, yeah so what was that difference and then I don't think anybody could call Laura abrasive. Mm -hmm. you know, annoying, maybe, but not <laughs> abrasive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, know, you, you, don't, you wouldn't call a central uh, European woman abrasive, and, uh, uh, not in her background, but that's a different story. But yeah, uh, mm -hmm. the different, different theories. Uh, if, if it's cartoon character, if you can say that. Fritz would talk about the, uh, the emphasizes such a thing as self-support and self-regulation. If you exaggerate this, Laura would focus on such a thing as support, supports for contacting. So you wouldn't look at a person on his or her own, but in Laura, you would look at a person in context, how a person can, you work with how a person can be, can be and is supported. And that, uh, that could that led to a development in New York of paying very close attention to the relationship and how a person is supported within a therapy session. Mm, mm -hmm. I, so I like that, that context. It's more of supporting the individual uh, to to through their healing process or through their awareness and trying to help them get to where they're going versus just them self-supporting. Yeah, it's as much as necessary and as little as possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that it's not a kind of that kind of a, oh, you know, like you're a holding coddling. not not in any way, shape, and form. You know, uh, clearly not not in any, any, but at the same time, not losing track of that. You know, from the from the very basic notion of how the person is sitting in the chair or how the person's feet are on the ground to the very sense of how person's voice is articulated from the chest from, from pelvis out to the spoken to the therapist now the therapist is speaking to the person so there's always that kind of sense of rhythm in the therapy and that's very basic for mm -hmm. laura's work because she was always attentive to the movement of the therapy and the sound of the therapy and the gestures of the therapy her background is in music and dance it was very clear very mm -hmm. clear in her work like the energy that someone brings into the room and that they're experiencing and really um, being able and willing to go into that energy and really try to process it with the client uh, as a relationship. Uh, yeah. Now, it, I have to say that a lot of how I am talking about Laura mm -hmm. is talk, talking about Laura from my context today. Mm -hmm. But I am, I am reiterating Laura from a contemporary point of view. Mm -hmm. Someone else might be presenting to you another version of Laura. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. It's necessarily so because we're talking today, 2013, 2023. I did that. 2023. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, it's from 2023. Yeah. I mean, everyone has their own experiences with people in general. So I I just appreciate what you're bringing and, and really for me personally, I feel like I've connected a lot more with her approach than I have with the, like I um, said, the training that I had, Um, it was more logical based versus um, emotional feeling and and really integrating um, some of the somatic experiences as much into the room of of, um, a person. Yeah, you'll see that in Laura, a lot of that, you know, her background was was with uh, um, uh, uh, Grindler's breath work in, in, in Germany. She she uh, 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 Elsa Grindle, and she did a lot of breath work and body work. Mm-hmm. You see that? Well, you mentioned that um, there were people who helped um, found the uh, New York Gestalt Institute, and at the start, and as I've been reading this book, um, she mentioned in at her twenty fifth. I think it was. Let me yeah. see. Her twenty. I don't know if you were there. I was going to bring it up. Let me see. I here. Would. That the 25th anniversary talk. Were you there? Probably. Yeah. And she mentions here, I would like to share with you some of the memories of the people who were involved at the time we started. Uh Four people that Fritz and I have been working with already have a few years joined as teachers at the start of the Institute. They were Paul Goodman, uh, Paul Weiss, I think I said his name right. Elliot Shapiro and yeah. Isidore from is that oh, yeah. correct? Sure, sure. And so these teachers per- ended up being professors at the founding of the institute. Can you share with me, like, first off, yeah. if you were there, what was that experience like um, for well, you to hear the anniversary talk? Well, yeah, I uh, it, it was a, it was at an armory on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. I think it was the Park Avenue Armory. And, you know, it was, it was you know wonderful. I mean, these were it was a small, intimate, intimate event. Um, uh, what then? I you know I, I was always just personally I was always impressed by Laura's erudition and her her connection to uh, European culture. That was one of the appeals um, she had for me. I, you know, it, back in those days, it continues to be uh, my take on Gestalt therapy is its rootedness and. In European uh, history and, and, and philosophy and psychology and uh, existential and and uh, philosophical background, so Laura connected to that very much. So, so you'll see in, in her writing, she will frequently reference people like Goethe, and that that, that you know, just completely spoke to me. So when he, to hear her speak, the her erudition and her culture just res, res, uh, resonated with me. So uh, you know, I studied with uh, with uh, Isidore Fromm. He was one of my teachers. So he was right in the room. I, I, Elliot Shapiro was in the room. I didn't know Elliot, but he was a, a, an important figure in in, uh, uh, in setting up the uh, a public school system at reform in New York City. Mm. I didn't know Paul Weiser, uh, Paul Weiser, but I heard he was brilliant. And of course, Paul Goodman. I didn't know Paul Goodman. I, I arrived in Gestalt therapy after he died, but I knew people who knew him. And Paul Goodman is it was a has been a legend in gestalt therapy and continues to be a legend in gestalt therapy. And that's another major difference, if you want to see, between Fritz and, and Laura. Laura was uh, was very close to Paul. And uh, 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 I say can say nothing, nothing more strongly than that. A difference between Fritz and Laura is that Laura never stopped referencing Paul. And I don't think Fritz says much about Paul through his mm-hmm. teaching. He was a big okay. part of the development of it in the beginning, I think even in Africa when they were there. Is that correct? I think he... South Africa? Uh, not, Africa. I don't think South Africa. But once they came, in the writing of Pearl Sefferlin and Goodman, mm-hmm. half of the book is Goodman. Okay. Gestalt therapy, most of Gestalt therapy theory is Goodman. Okay. Yeah, at least 50% of, of the of basic Gestalt therapy theory is, is, uh, is Goodman. Uh, They've had a huge influence into what Gestalt therapy is and the institute and what it is today. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the, the you know you have you have uh, the the pearls just came to New York from South Africa 
and Fritz and Laura were were knitting together all their ideas into Gestalt therapy, bringing in in psychoanalysis and existentialism, the Gestalt psychology, and holism of smuts from uh, South Africa, and they met Paul Goodman with who had his own psychoanalysis ideas, his ideas from American pragmatism, his ideas from political anarchy. Uh, and they also wove it all together. And you have Pearl Cephalon and Goodman, and you have the theory part of Pearl Cephalon and Goodman, which is either volume one or volume two, depending upon which edition of the book you have. Mm-hmm. Goodman uh, Goodman sat down with the notes of, of Fritz. They, he puzzled it all together, and they articulated an assimilated version written by Goodman. Some of it written by Fritz, it's arguable back and forth, but the articulation mm-hmm. of Gestalt theory from 1952 was articulated predominantly by Goodman. My institute taught that exclusively for decades. Mm. We were all trained in that model. Laura taught that model and her own model, but we did not teach the Fritz model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Laura did not do hot seat. Well, she did hot seat, but not Fritz's way. Mm-hmm. In her own way of more supporting role, in that. yeah, but not as a not as clearly structured. She did her own. She was she was she did her way, but she was she was back in the early days. It was a, she in the early days. She was she had a lot of those techniques, but it mm-hmm. disappeared as time went. Okay, um, she there's she appears as I'm reading and like even her bio on the website, very humble in her parts of contributing to the development of Gestalt therapy and her impact. Yeah. Um, how do you believe her role as a found, as one of the founders of Gestalt therapy was and still remains today? Like how influential do you think she has been? Very influential, but she was too humble. I think that was a, a function of, uh, of her personality um, in her biography. Uh, it's, it, uh, she was responsible for a fair amount of ego, hunger, and aggression. The whole notion of hanging on bite was hers in, in ego, hunger, and aggression. Three chapters in Pearl Saffron and Goodman were, were written by her uh, without not being credited. Um, she t- took a back seat too much. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that was an issue of being a woman back then. Uh, uh, she was much more important than, uh, than the credit then- that she took. And that's what I was wondering is if it was a cultural component of being, you know, the era that she was raised in, the experiences that she had, you know, with even the Holocaust and the wars and the being a woman and, and the, even the European um, yeah. uh, culture of women not taking uh, responsibility or even acknowledgement and honoring for their parts of what they contribute to projects. And I was wondering if that is why I feel like she's kind of been not as in the forefront and getting the recognition that she yeah. She gets more, rec- more recognition in Europe. You know, there, there's the Laura Pearls Institute in Germany. Uh, Nancy Ammon Lyon just went over her unpublished uh, material and published it. Uh, and so that she's getting more recognition uh, in Germany and Austria. Uh, uh, she's getting more recognition. Uh, remember, she got, also had a PhD. She studied with uh, the Gestalt psychologist in Freiburg. So she's, you know, she was intellectually a heavyweight. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I was yeah. astonished when I saw, I mean, like a reading what she has, the education she has, the experience she has. I mean, I I there's no words to really put forth for that yeah. to be honest um yeah. uh we talked about the power of movement a little bit and that she talks a lot about in the, in this book of living at the boundary she mentions the power of movement and dance is a major part of the work she uses okay. in gestalt therapy the differentiation okay. this is different and she even talks about that it's different than Fr- fritz style and that she feels like there's a piece that's missing maybe in his style that she contributes to the development and of what she uses with Gestalt therapy. Uh, she mentioned that uh, Fritz was anchored basically, that's my words, to the chair. Um, and and how, how 
did she incorporate movement? Um, yes, dance, but other ways as well into a session with gestalt therapy. She'd ask a person to get up and move across the room. She would move with the person. Uh, uh, she'd have a person lie down. She would uh, uh, work with the how frozen or or mo mo or mobile the pel a pel person's pelvis is. She just filled up my lungs. She would work with the degree of breath. Uh, she'd work with the movement of a voice. She would ask a person to, to, um, to speak and gesture at the same time. She would gesture along with the person. Uh, uh, instead of speak, move. In, instead of add, add sound to your feet, to, to what are you experiencing, but express it with a sound, not a word. Mm -hmm. uh, we incorporate the connection between movement, feeling, action, movement, uh, and sensation. She would she do the, the entire thing. She introduced the idea of the awareness continuum, you know, that, mm. that is a, all of, the, of the, those kinds of things. So uh, 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 um, you need to stay seated in a session with Laura. And you said it was the uh, movements continuum she... And awareness continuum. She, she put the, you know, that. What, yeah, she would talk about the awareness continuum. Can you speak more about that? The degrees of awareness from uh, from gradations of of uh, of uh, uh, which, which you're somewhat aware of to something which you can be fully aware of. You know, okay, that, that would be. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And from what I've been learning about Laura, what kind of started me in this direction is that I heard that she worked a lot with children or at least at some parts she worked with children and that's not really something that was taught to me as much um yes family work but uh, every time i saw family work done with the training that i had it was all like teenager or older it wasn't really involving children and this is one aspect that drew me to her to learn more about her in the beginning and how did she modify or adapt her approach to work with children i think she, she did that as, as a uh, in europe i don't think she i'm not aware if she's doing that in the united states okay. she worked on about the uh transition from a, a suckling to a biteling it's an ego hunger and aggression she talked about dental aggression. She paid attention to to uh, the weaning of children and how that would, could be reflected in the styles of an, of an adult um, uh, uh, taking in things without chewing chewing it. Okay, so the developmental phases and how it incorporates yeah. into adulthood. Yeah. yeah, she began. She suggested those things. Okay, uh, the other people have, have brought out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she does mention that she sees herself as um, a psychoanalyst. And mm -hmm. she, what do you what well, did that mean to her to be a psychoanalysis? Well, they were both psychoanalysts mm -hmm. in, in South Africa. They came to the United States as psychoanalysts. Uh, I don't know when they stopped identifying. Probably after the, the founding of the New York Institute. It, it, yeah. That awareness piece of really analyzing and really learning and and using that into therapy was very influential to the development of Gestalt therapy. Uh, well, gestalt therapy is grafted onto psychoanalysis. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, which I think is amazing how it it's it's used those techniques and education and then kind of the way that she explained it was um, with Freud uh, analyzing it and seeing if it applies still to how they use gestalt therapy and the development of gestalt therapy, uh, or in some cases, like kind of debunk it, if you will, of maybe this doesn't apply, or I don't see this part of what Freud was doing. Yeah. Yeah. It was an offshoot. Uh, if, uh, uh, Ritz tried to submit a paper to uh to Freud uh, at an analytic conference and uh, it was in the 30s and it was turned down and they never got over that. Oh, I wonder why. <laughs> Some of the stuff. Um, uh, let's see where I'm at. Um, so something that I'm, I see through a trauma lens, a lot of what I do is trauma therapy and I use gestalt therapy with trauma. I was also 
influenced and kind of discouraged to use Gestalt with trauma. And I was wondering what your take on using Gestalt with trauma and helping heal some trauma wounds. What is that for you? My, whenever I hear d- discouraged, I wonder what the, what the what that means to you, uh, because uh, um, I was my, told that the, it was not intended to use for trauma. Those were the words I got, and I'm like, well, I see a very a, big impact. That's whoever said that doesn't. I don't think uh, um, quite gets what, what that that, what, that Gestalt was not intended for anything. It was there's no intended for. I mean, it's it's a psychotherapeutic modality. Um, uh, everything human is is uh, embraced by our approach. There's no experience that isn't available to be approached from a Gestalt therapeutic lens. Period. Period. Mm-hmm. Uh, if if it, with the proper all ex, all experience is contacting. Whatever experience is, it's within. It's it, it can be explicable experientially as contacting. And if we're, if trauma is a rupture or a disruption in the process of contacting, gestalt therapy specifically is involved. Pays attention to the process of contacting. Mm-hmm. So if you maintain your interest in the process of contacting as a gestalt therapist. What emerges or the, the, is the figure ground of contact of of, con, of trauma within within the process of contacting. There you go. Now, yeah. if if you're experiencing yourself as something going awry, then you pay attention to what are the, what's what. How is there a disruption? How is there a, a, a falling away of the support processes? Mm-hmm. What's happening in the ground? And you, your attention may be drawn to what's happening in the ground at these moments. Is the is the is the ground disappearing? Is there suddenly an absence where there had been a presence? Is, is you know so what, what? And then that becomes more figural, and you work from there slowly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I I I appreciate the passion and and how you are articulating is very validating to me. And that's what I feel like Laura Pearls has given me as a validation for the work that I have been even developing as a clinician using Gestalt therapy is the impact I see with people with healing um, from traumatic experiences. Um, Abandonment, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. So like abandonment was one of the first experiences that I had that I saw like a huge healing experience with using chair work at that time. And, and really in my early time using gestalt and, and really finding that there was such an impact with healing the trauma wounds uh, from family of origin. I, I just could not deny it. I just couldn't. And yeah. that's really what propelled me into learning more and using more gestalt therapy. Yeah. Now, it, it, if the person says that certain uh, of the so-called techniques aren't aren't uh, aren't applicable under certain circumstances, well, of course that's so. You know, uh, you know, you, everything has to be has to match the given circumstances that are emerging, and that when you move in a, in this direction, when there isn't ground for that, there's going to be overwhelm, and you know, overwhelm can never be effective. It's nothing can be assimilated in these experiences, and you're going to just tread tread water at best. Mm-hmm. When I was a, 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 a social work student in my first year placement, I had a very disturbed person, and I stupidly that those years I didn't know anything what I was doing. I had the person you know, dialogue <laughs> with a chair, and it all went wrong. It was all you know, it was uh-huh. ridiculous. We you know, learn as we go. I was doing a mere technique. Which was because you know I didn't. It was no ground for that, and and the person, it was it, it was in, inapplicable. You know, just, but but yeah. if you but if you're practicing Gestalt therapy, a technique is irrelevant. You know, there are mm-hmm. no techniques for Gestalt therapy. You know, oh, you, you, there are no such thing as a technique in Gestalt therapy. There's only Gestalt therapy. If you're starting to use techniques, you stop doing psych- Gestalt therapy. You're doing mm. techniques, not Gestalt therapy. You know, as, as Isidore Fromm would say, when you do role playing, you're playing a role. 
then that's not gestalt therapy. Mm. That's, that's, that's acting. But when something emerges from the work where you offer a suggestion, could you do this? It's emerging from the work. Now that's different. Yeah. Wow. I'm learning so much from you today. I really appreciate it. I, I really am. It, it, gestalt therapy is for me, it, it, even as we're talking, it's kind of, it's evolving of how I experience gestalt therapy or gestalt with other people in the room. How would you define, I guess, gestalt therapy for what, how you use it or how you've been taught? Um, uh, in some time, I don't know when it was, Laura Pearls was on a panel, you know, with a, a God, God, God. Albert Ellis for rational and motor therapy is a real pain in the ass. Uh, Carl Rogers, who's you know, just a really nice guy. And then, you know, and somebody else, and then Laura Pearls, each person said to find what is just such and such. They, they all went on to long talk. They came to Laura Pearls. She smiled. She used to smile like this. She, to... <laughs> she said, didn't say a word. <laughs> no. She <laughs> just smiled. It is a smile. Yeah, and everybody, just a smile. And everybody mm-hmm. starts cheering. Oh, you're still there. So, a- a- answers your question. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, what was your question? <laughs> well, like, how I, that's, I mean, I, I love it. Like, so, like, the how you define an experience gestalt therapy and getting away from like the verbiage of like yeah, yeah, the yeah, technique yeah, yeah. and like just embodying it. I feel like that's kind of what I'm getting from you. It's a different. There, there is, and I'm wondering no, how you would yeah. define it or um, share with it's me a, what that is. I'm, I was not, yes, I was, I, as uh, I was not stepping, I was not uh, punting because it's, it's a definite, there's a definite answer to that question. And I'm resisting being held to it because I don't want to make it sound, and I definitely don't want to make it sound simple because it is not simple. It takes years to become a gestalt therapist. And it's not like anybody can do it. It takes years to understand. And by mean understand, I don't mean cognitively understand. Mm -hmm. To understand, to practice gestalt therapy. And to get gestalt therapy, like it is any any other serious modality. Um, uh, so I don't know how quite on what dimension to answer. For that. I understand gestalt therapy today today to be a, a significant, holistic, humanistic, relational approach to psychotherapy. Mm-hmm. Uh, gra- I think of I think of gestalt therapy as a clinical phenomenology. And by, and by clinical, I mean is that it's addressed human suffering mm. in a serious way. Phenomenological meaning that it begins with direct ex- experience means we we approach experience in the most serious manner in which you're constantly up opening, opening, opening to what is experienced, what is experienced, and the next experience. And I don't mean it in the next temporally, you know, mm-hmm. like here and put away that's that's, that's cliche. But opening experience to disclose, uncover whatever is beneath each experience to each mm. experience, to each experience. That's the phenomenological aspect of gestalt therapy. Yeah. And we're holistic, not just in the sense that we bring together you know, you know, mind and body and everything, but we're holistic in the sense that we look at a person as situated in time, in place, in history, in past and present in a living way. You know, we, we we we're we, we we've collapsed. We're contemporary, in the sense that that we see things in uh, uh, outside of of the, of, of uh, traditional ways of looking at time. So that when we look developmentally, we're not looking at at a uh, uh, um, simple chronology. We're looking at the, the lived past in a person's life. When we see past, present, and future, we see that collapse in the phenomenological present. Mm. And this brings us very close to the way contemporary psychoanalysts look at the world. That's why we're, we're involved in, you know, it, it, we're really close to uh, we're having conferences together with contemporary psychoanalysts now. Mm-hmm. So that's how, at, at, in a very 
short way how I see gestalt therapy today. <laughs> yeah. Very yeah. different from the way they see it. They saw it in the 50s because the mm -hmm. world's different today. It is. Does that make it? You, yes. You can, yes. I, I can, I feel it. I, I, I can 100% um connect to what you've shared it's the experience and that when i work with someone in with using gestalt and like being a, a gestalt practitioner it's it's really the experience there's nothing like it there it's hard to put words into the experiences i always have with people and at, when i first started using it I was like wow like this is like miracles are happening that I can't really explain and the process is that like what you're talking about with support I feel like I'm supporting the client as much as they're supporting me to help support them that's right because it's both yeah I want to add one thing how could I almost have forgotten this about Laura's major contribution was the aesthetic uh, she was the first person, as far as I know, who pulled out of, of Pearl Saffron and Goodman the lines which refer to gestalt therapy as an as a, as a psychotherapy as an aesthetic approach. It involves forms of uh, that are organized by the senses in in that are appreciated aesthetically. Mm -hmm. So the aesthetic criterion of how we work. Is evaluated in terms of grace and harmony and movement and clarity, uh, um, and these are our our direct experience of how we of how things appear. She always refers back to the to, that's when we talk about movement. We talk about her, 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 her paying attention to rhythm, her paying attention to the brightness of an of a communication in terms of its sharpness. These are the direct direct experiences of contacting. And she would point out that aesthetics itself refers to is a Greek word referring to to direct to the sensations, mm. and that's an underlying yeah. um, value in her approach to Gestalt therapy, mm -hmm. and that's a straight line to, to the New York Institute, the idea that we've developed as the aesthetic criterion of of contacting. It's There's written. so much more in that than the words that people use. Yeah. And that's against the ideas of an external criterion, which would be psychopathology. And that's been picked up a lot, a lot in the European approach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm getting she's excited. <laughs> I just get excited talking about these things. Um, thank you. And I'm obvious, I'm going to have to watch this again and again, just to like, make sure that I, I feel like just really embrace everything that we're talking about today um because I, I really do i hope i can speak with you again sometime so we can have more conversations on this I, I, yeah sure it's, it's a it's my, I, owe, I owe this to well, laura yeah mm -hmm. so she yeah. she obviously i i watched a video of you on youtube on humans of gestalt remembering laura pearls and you talked about the different parts of Laura and how you knew her. And I just saw you light up and like you sharing a little bit of her personality and how she's idolized, but then her personality and how she embodies her personality of what you've experienced with her. And she appears to be very influential and a mentor to you and obviously other people. But how has yeah. she through Gestalt therapy helped shape you as a person and as a clinician? I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, I was I wasn't that close to her. I, I, you know, Richard Kistler was my root mentor, really, and he okay. shaped me a lot. Yeah, you know, you know and, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> there are others who are closer to her. You know, uh, 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 I mean, she brought out a lot of my warmth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. A lot, a lot of my warmth and softness as a therapist. You know, uh, it meant a lot to me when she. It meant a lot to me as a as a young therapist for her to for her to see me. You know, I remember when when Richard, my mentor, uh, when I uh, um, uh, when I was first made full member of the New York Institute, she came back to to to, to the group I was in. She said, uh, "Laura asked about you," and I almost fainted. <laughs> she 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 means she knows I agree. You know, that's before that's before I trained with her. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. 
Yes, it, like yes. you felt seen and and important. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and I think time when she said, you know, Dan and so and so, yeah, they're the ones. You know, she said, I said what? <laughs> so things like that, the little parcels of things. So says, so, you know, I, I uh, uh, after she died, I became pretty close with her daughter for a while, and uh, you know, and, and, uh, and the family. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, so I, I so, but uh. And in the same interview, you mentioned that she wasn't the strongest in theorizing. Um, what aspects, and I think you talked a little bit about this, but if there's anything else maybe you want to share, what aspects were pillars of how she conceptualized gestalt therapy in practice and, and taught students? Yeah, it was support for contacting. Support mm -hmm. for contact, grace and harmony and aesthetic contacting, bringing in no notions of art, music, and, and presence. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, a kind of warmth and grace and harmony and support, support for contacting, support for contacting, support for contacting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. What do you so. want to pass on to future generations of digital therapy? I'm sorry? And intelligence and intelligence and the mm -hmm. use of intelligence. She had, mm -hmm. she had no, she had no patience for the unintelligent, although you know, she was not a saint. I mean, also she was not a saint. It's very funny, you know. And, and people talk about. I may have said this. Talk about Fritz having all of these affairs and being, yeah. being a, you know. I mean, she, you know, other people told me, "But oh, Laura." <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no one's so, perfect. I, no one. I, yeah, not not in my sight, but it was uh, at another time. But she was. She said, "Carry on." We're human, yeah. and I like how you touched on in that interview of Gestalt remembering Laura Pearls, our human of Gestalt. Is like the humanistic side of, of remembering that we are human as clinicians and really connecting from one human to another and help supporting and, and through the healing process of therapy. Um, and that's how I see it as like therapy can be a healing experience um, and help people. But um, the humanistic side, we need to remember that piece as well, not just yeah, forgetting absolutely. that. No, yeah, I forget that. Uh, did you see Christoph Weber's uh, DVD on her? No, no, I have not. Well, you have to see that. You, on the, I think you can get it on the New York Institute website. He's still selling it. Uh, Christoph Weber is a gestalt therapist from Berlin. He made a purpose, a, a mission to to do to, to, to bring her voice out. So he came to the United States and interviewed a bunch of us who studied with with her, and he made a, a video. And he, oh. he's, uh, it's very good. I'm gonna have to get it. Yes, that's it's awesome. Good. And he did exactly that. And you know, I, and uh, it uh, it's good. It's good. It's good. Uh, mm -hmm. Very good. Selling it at conferences. Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely gonna have to watch it. I didn't know, and I'll have to look on no, the I, website. I can send you a link to it. I think yes, I have a link to it. Yeah. There's, what do you want to pass on to future generations of Gestalt therapists? <laughs> you know, as we're developing and growing, like what do you want to pass on? As we're all the time. That's why I became president of the New York Institute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I do this in all my writing now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, um, mm -hmm. well, everything. Yeah. Just giving. Oh, basically that we're we're a, a, a living modality that is that is a, a grounded in a long tradition that goes back as long as any other psychotherapy and that is uh that is uh, respectable it is very powerful i've never and, uh, i've never seen anything like it and uh i stop i don't stop thinking I've always said that about gestalt therapists. Like gestalt therapists don't stop thinking, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and everything I've written is about that. It's mm. yeah. awesome. Very powerful. Um, well, that was for the questions. Anything else that you want to kind of share? Uh, no, no. No. Yeah. Well, That's I. Me. 
Oh, I'm, I'm here anytime you need me. Yeah, I mean, I really would love to go to New York. Honestly, I told my husband, I said, I just want to go there and like have a tour of the New York Gestalt Institute. I have a place. That's what we I was wondering. Exist. We exist here. We have no office, never had an office, never had an office. Oh. We meet in people's apartments and rented space. We meet once a month for a uh, for a uh, presentation. All of our, since COVID, we've been always online. Even before then, we've had online meetings. We have monthly meetings where we have a presentation. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody is welcome. Everybody is welcome. You you just join by getting on our mail on our mailing list. Go to our website, which is under reconstruction, which is sort of a, a, a now it's newyorkerstall.org. And uh, we're it's under reconstruction, so it's it's uh, sort of messy now. Yeah, I and, see that uh, you have a membership, I think, or something of the sort. Is that right? I wanted to know more yeah. about that. The memberships. What can you share a little bit about the memberships? Membership. We have uh, we have a student membership. We have a full a, a, an associate membership and a full membership. You know, and and uh, associate members get you know get get on the website, get the name on the website, and you you know you you come to our meetings and you know you can be part of our process of decision making. Well, you're at, you know, and you, you're just part of it. You have the you have the, the honor of being an associate member of the oldest gestalt therapy organization, period, bar none. And you're just part of our community. You know, we have a discussion list. We invite people to join and to talk to one another about theory practice and a monthly meeting. And we're on always trying to find ways to make it more of a um, kind of a community so that you can join us, give to us, we give back to you. We were always, we were committed to, to keeping gestalt therapy alive and developing. You know, we don't have a fixed, fixed notion. We're trying to figure things out as we're going along. Yeah. Um, and that's how gestalt therapy appears to have always been where people collaborated together and just, it's a community. That's what we're trying to do more and more, more and more. Now at this point, we're trying to figure out a way to make it vital after as the pandemic's fading, and uh, but we have members now from everywhere from where from Ukraine throughout throughout Europe, South America, uh, well, Asia, maybe even now. You know, we're mm -hmm. we're, we're so you meet online, is that right? You meet online for like a kind of like a, a group meeting every so often. Yeah, yeah, once a month presentations. You know, okay. uh, we have any from. From 30 to 60 people. So we have a presenter on a theme and uh, depending on how the presenter presents or how it works out, we have small group interactions and then we come back into the large group and process it. You know, it all depends upon the, the luck of the draw. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I have been asked to do a continuing education with um, specifically on Gestalt. And so... You might hear my daughter, they came in from outside. Um, but I was wondering um, if, like, I want to be able to really bring Laura's approach in more than what I've had in the past. And so that's one reason why I met with you today is to really kind of incorporate her more into not only my practice, but as I'm trying to help other people learn more about Gestalt. Um, and what it is. So I'm going to use what you brought to me today. And then if there's anything else that will help with resources to get more information, um, where would I look besides the website? Where else, where else could there be? Because I got stuff from the website. I, I've gotten her book, but what else can I kind of pull from as she is? humble yeah. or even maybe what you've written yeah i've written a, you know got a bunch of stuff you know there's the book here now next by taylor store about the early days of the institute uh the gestalt journal page what's it called gestalt.org to see whether or not they have things on her articles on her uh that's the gestalt therapy page um um and that video yeah. I'm going to yeah, watch that video. Video. Mm -hmm. uh, 
That's all I can think of. Uh, okay. It's Nancy's book. Nancy Emmett Lyon. Wonderful. Well, I appreciate you very, very much. Um, and I know that your time is valuable. Um, I would like to stay in touch and I'm going to explore the membership as well that I can get connected with the community. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, nice meeting you. Yeah, nice meeting you. Thank you so much, Dan. You have a blessed day. You too. Bye. Thank you. Bye.